All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the internal games on your PlayStation Classic. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Please do me a favor if this is your first time here, go down below the video, hit that thumbs up button, and subscribe to the channel as we are working our way towards 30,000 subscribers. Now, this video is exactly what I said it was going to be. We are going to be taking our PlayStation Classic consoles, we're gonna be removing the internal games, and we are going to load up games directly onto the internal memory of the console. So keep in mind that you are going to need to do this at your own risk. There is the potential that things could go badly if you do not follow the steps exactly how I show you in this video. Now this is actually something I have had a tremendous amount of questions about how to do or if it's possible, and yes, it is possible thanks to Project Iris. So I do wanna mention, if you are currently running on AutoBleam, you can't do this process, you need to be on Project Iris in order for this application to work and in order to get these games swapped. And there are actually a few different reasons why some people would want to do it. As everyone knows, Sony made a really big mistake when they launched this, mostly because they were using PAL region games. And because of that, we ended up having these games running a little bit slower than we were used to, and they just didn't feel right. So this is actually a way to fix it. If you want to swap the original games, you're going to get much better playability here in North America. But additionally, there is a ton of people who just want to be able to load up, say, 20 or 25 games directly onto the internal memory of the PlayStation Classic, not really have to mess around with Project Eris, not have to mess around with AutoBleam, not have to mess around with having USB drives and OTG cables and everything kind of hanging out of the console. They just want something nice and clean. They just want to put their favorite games on here, take the console as it is, and that becomes their new PlayStation Classic. And that's what this video is going to show you how to do. So first and foremost, if you are not currently running Project Eris, you do need to do that. I will leave a link in the description on how to get Project Eris up and running if this is your first time, or if you are switching over from another mod, uh, I will leave links for you to follow in the description down below. Additionally, we do need to run the Project Eris desktop app. Again, if this is something you do not have or have not done yet, I will leave links to that as well. It's very simple. It's just an application you download, no need to install. It is uh, able to just run out of the gate. Now let's go ahead and jump into this process. Now, like I said, you are going to want to follow this process literally step by step. You don't want to miss anything because there is the potential risk of damaging your console. Obviously, when we are starting to do things like writing to internal memory, you want to make sure you're doing it properly. First thing that we need to do, grab our current Project Eris USB drive, which I've got right now plugged into my computer. You can see it over here on the right hand side of the screen. And then I've also got my Project Eris a desktop app. So what we're going to do is double click on the desktop app and it's going to launch and then it's going to try to look for my USB drive. And in this case, it did pick it up right away. But if for whatever reason it cannot locate that drive, really simple fix. You just have to hit the change drive button and then reselect the drive from where it's going to be living. In my case, it's the H drive and we are good to go. And another really important thing to mention is that you do need a minimum and that's an absolute minimum of 30 gigabytes free available on that USB drive. And the reason for that is because we are going to take a backup of the existing games and we are going to put them on the USB drive. And then we also need to have an additional 15 gigs or so um, of space so we can grab our bin Q files and put them onto the console as well. So altogether you need 15 gigs for each 30 gigs total. And uh, that's going to help you in the event that you ever want to restore this thing back to the stock games. We have them living on that USB drive and it makes that process substantially easier. But now we've got Project Iris and our desktop app up and running. We're gonna go ahead and go to our tools section and then jump into the mods cloud. Now you can of course go directly to the mods cloud on the Project Iris website and then download it and then put it into the mods folder within the USB drive. If you wanna go that route, we're gonna do everything through the desktop app just because it is nice and clean. So if you go ahead and take a peek at this mod list, you're gonna see something called Project Iris internal apps. We're gonna to wanna to go ahead and grab this, and this is going to be the application that we're gonna use with Project Eris in order to swap 
our internal ROMs. So that's totally fine. What we do is we can take a peek and we can see how to use it. I'm going to show you guys all this information. Uh, it can be pretty complicated if you are looking at this and you're not very tech savvy. Don't worry about it. The process isn't terribly difficult. We're just going to do things one step at a time. So first step, we're going to download this mod. Now it's going to go ahead and copy that mod right over here. Once it's done, this little dialog box should go away and uh, we're going to be pretty much good to go. It's now going to be copied into the correct folder. And now that we've got that mod file installed and it's in the proper folder, and I can actually show you guys if we hop over to our USB drive and we jump into the Project Iris folder and then into the mods folder, you'll see that this new mod file is there. All that we really need to do is grab our USB drive, pop it into the PlayStation Classic, let it install, and then we're going to start doing a backup from there. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the PlayStation Classic, and we're going to go ahead and get that taken care of. All right, so here we are on our main boot menu. The application has successfully installed, which you guys should have seen on the screen right there. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right on into the Project Era side of things right here. All right, so here we are. Now I'm actually loaded directly into my ports folder, which is where I wanna be, but depending on how you've got your build set up, you're gonna need to be able to get into where you have access to all of the built-in cores and launchers. So for example, we've got our RetroArch launcher here, and then we're gonna have a bunch of new icons here. So we've got something called the Restore Backup Games. We've got Replace Internal Games. We've also got over on the uh, left-hand side here, backup internal games and this is going to be the one that we want to use so the reason we want to do this is because it's going to create a backup of the internal games that were built into the playstation classic now i'm going to go ahead and hit ok on this and it's going to take us to a screen here where it says backing up internal games this takes approximately 12 minutes and that's going to be the case we are going to have to sit through and wait for 12 minutes or approximately 12 minutes it can take longer depending on the speed of your usb drive but we're gonna want it to do this and we've just gotta wait until it's finished. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip forward and jump back to you guys in a few minutes. All right, so here we are back on our menu. Once the backup's complete, it's gonna just kick you back to the last section uh, you were in, whether that was in a folder or if it was in a specific navigation menu. Um, but we're going to end up back here and what that indicates to us is that the backup is complete now i will mention that took about 20 minutes on my end so this may take 20 25 minutes depending on the speed of your usb drive and just how things are connected so even if it feels like it's dragging along just let it do its thing do not turn it off in the middle of the backup and just let it finish what it needs to do but now that we've got our backup ready to go our internal games are completely prepared and ready for us to move on to the next step. What we want to do is power down our PlayStation Classic, grab our USB drive, pop it into our computer, and then go back into our desktop app for Project Iris. So that's where we're going to go, and I'll switch over there now. All right, so here we are back on our computer. As you guys can see on the right-hand side, my USB drive has been plugged in and it is registered and visible. Now we're going to go ahead and grab our Project Iris desktop app and open it up. And it's going to go ahead and start loading up. Now, what you're going to notice right away is that it hasn't automatically detected my USB drive. So for whatever reason, it didn't catch it. So we need to go to change drive. We're going to select the H drive. It's going to then update the game list database and we are good to go. Now, I do want to mention what you're going to see now is a red button up on the top here in the right hand corner. It says go to internal mode. And if you look on the bottom left corner, it'll say what mode we're in. So we are currently in external storage. Because we've installed that mod and the desktop app has identified that we've done a backup and we've installed everything correctly, we can now go ahead and hit this go to internal mode. And now that we've done that, we are able to go ahead and add some games in here and it's gonna give us a maximum of 25 games right up in the top. You can see zero out of 25. Now keep in mind, you may not be able to load up 25 games because it depends on the size of those games. Remember, we're only working with about 15 or so gigs of internal data. Additionally, we also need to keep in mind that because we're loading our games directly onto the internal memory of the PlayStation Classic, that means the games are going to run directly off of the internal emulator. So there's going to be a handful of games that are not going to be compatible. And one of the ones off the top of my head, I think was Parasite Eve 2. That one does not work on the stock emulator, so there's no sense in adding it. But at this point, I want to just remind you guys 
that you want to be very cautious here although this process is quite simple and um, there's very little room for mistakes if you do make a mistake it does carry some risks uh, and potentially causing some issues with your console additionally if things are not done 100 percent maybe the games won't launch or the games won't have the proper artwork so we want to make sure that we do things properly the first time around but as I said, we are now in internal mode. You can see that in the bottom left hand corner. You can also see that none of my games from my USB populate. If I go back to normal mode, it'll grab my game list. Here's all my games. Everything's good there. But when I go to internal mode, it has absolutely nothing. And one last thing, I'm sure this question is going to be asked, is if you can load other consoles onto here into the internal memory. No, there's no other emulators that can run them. You need to load PlayStation games. That's the purpose of this tutorial. So what's left for us to do is just go ahead and add some games. So what we need to do is create a new database. So we're going to hit the plus one or the add new game feature here. It's going to open up our picture and game.ini helper. We're not going to use that yet because we haven't identified what game we're going to use. So we can go ahead and close that. But over here is where we need to add the files. So I've actually got my folder of games right over here. I'm going to go ahead and kick it over to the side. There we go. And the first game I think I'm going to add to the list is going to be Crash Bandicoot number one. So I'm going to go ahead and grab it. And I do want to mention these games need to be in bin queue. You can't load PBP, you can't load ISO, you can't load anything else other than bin queue. So it's very important that that's the case. We're going to go ahead and grab these games. We're going to drag and drop them and they should populate inside of this file list section. Next, we're going to need to grab the metadata and the box art. So we can go down here and hit the edit game and box art button. Next, we've just got to go ahead and search for it. So in this case, we're going to go down to the search and we're going to search Crash Bandicoot. And we're going to be searching in the PSX data center. So that's going to give us all the options that we need. Uh, we're going to look for the Crash Bandicoot USA version because that's what I've got here. I'm going to double click on that. It's going to go ahead and pull that information up over on the right hand side. You can see the box art, the disk information, all the metadata. So we're going to go ahead and grab that picture. Then we're also going to go ahead and grab the game.ini files so we can pull all that information, disk information, title, publisher, developer, total number of games. Once we're happy with how this looks, we're going to hit save as, and then we're just going to go ahead and save it into the proper folder. It'll automatically be where it needs to be. We'll hit save. And then we're also going to do the same thing with the photo. We'll hit save as it'll be in the correct area. We're going to hit save. And we are now good to close out of this. So when we close here, you're going to see that we've got all of the information that we need. However, there is a problem. The Q file does not match the name of the PNG. And the solution to this is going to be relatively simple. We're going to go ahead and click on the PNG because it has the proper serial number information. We're going to hit rename. We're going to grab that information. We're going to copy it. Then we're going to go over to our Q file. We're going to rename that and we're going to leave the .q, but we're going to replace everything before it with the exact information that we just copied from the image. We're going to hit enter. And now that we've got our Q and our PNG named the same, everything should be good to go, but we are still going to have an error here that says PCSX.CFG or the config file is not found in the folder. So we do need to grab that from somewhere else on our USB drive. Now I happen to have it uh, handy, but if you don't and you jump over to your USB drive in the games folder where a specific title would be, you can see that there is going to be this .pcsx.config file right here. So I'm just gonna go back to where I was. I've got it. I'm gonna go ahead and drag it over and we should be good. Now you can see it says no issues detected. Now this game is ready to roll. All right, so Crash Bandicoot is 100% up and running. Now I will mention, like I said, if you already have the database information already pre-built from your USB drive, you can go ahead and drag and drop it, but again, it needs to be bin Q. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to do a double disc or a multi-disc game. So I'm gonna hit new again. And for the purposes of this, I'm gonna do Metal Gear Solid. So I'm gonna close out of this picture and game.ini helper, we don't need it. And you're gonna notice that I've already got it preloaded onto my USB build. I've got everything that I need. I've got the image file right here. I've got the game.ini, I've got the pcsx.config file. All I need to do is grab everything, drop it right on over to here and it's going to start transferring those files in. Now I will mention, you can see here, it does take a little bit of time, 
but once they're in, you really shouldn't have any problems. And as you can see, because I just dragged and dropped them in, I'm not going to have any issues detected because they were working previously. Now it's important to mention, if you do get an error that says the game.ini doesn't represent the same proper number of Q files or any of those sort of things, you will need to go over to the game.ini file right click on it we're going to edit in notepad plus plus and you're going to see here that it does have disk one comma disk two if it shows that it doesn't have the proper number of q files you just need to add in each disk separated by a comma then hit save and then close but that's more or less it so i'm going to go ahead and let this finish up and i'm actually going to go ahead and load mine up with my 25 games ish whatever it ends up being and i'll be right back Okay, so we're back now. I've gone ahead and loaded up about 22 titles. And like I said, you can have a maximum of 25 games or there is a space limit. And as you can see along the top here, I only have about 161 megabytes left. So I'm gonna certainly leave that space available for save states or anything along those lines. I don't wanna completely max out the memory, um, but uh, we should be pretty good. And I've gone ahead and loaded up just games that I think that I would personally play um, with buddies or by myself. So. And once we've got everything kind of set up and installed, uh, you're going to want to take a look at your game list here. If there is an asterisk beside any of the numbers, that would indicate that there is some sort of an error. But for the most part, everything went in pretty good. And just to give you guys an example, even if the game has multiple track files, as you can see, Twisted Metal 2 has track 1, 2, 3, all the way down to 12, completely fine. You load them all up in there. And it'll be totally fine as long as the Q file is formatted correctly to include all of those tracks. Now, once we are done and we are happy, we've got our game list, everything looks good and there are no errors left, we're gonna go ahead and hit the generate database button. It doesn't take very long at all. It goes ahead and generates that database for us. And now it says you can now properly unplug your USB drive, plug it into your PlayStation Classic and uh, run the appropriate launcher to edit the internal game. So we're good, we're gonna hit okay. But just to show you guys, I do have my USB drive right over here. So if we jump into the project underscore iris folder, there is an internal underscore games folder. We're going to double click on that. And inside of this games folder, it's going to have the built in 20 games. So this is going to be our backup of the 20 games that were pre-installed on the PlayStation Classic. We do not want to lose those. Those are going to be important in the event that we ever want to restore back to original and this is actually important because if you load up 20 games today and maybe two or three months down the road you say hey you know what i'm done with these 20 games i want to swap it with another 20 games you're going to want to revert or restore the console back to stock and then start the process over again and i think that's generally going to be the safest method so with showing that that's in there when you double click on the replaced games that's where our new games are going to be and as you can see i've got 22 different folders here i've got my databases folder and i have 22 different games obviously in the desktop app so we're more or less good i'm going to go ahead and pop my usb drive into the playstation classic and we're going to switch over to that now Okay, so here we are on our Project Iris boot menu. We're gonna jump into our Project Iris application. Perfect, now it's gonna default sending me into all of my PlayStation games, which is fine, but we need to navigate over to our port section, wherever that is on your build. Perfect, here we are. And now what we need to do is look for the replace internal games application. So we're gonna go ahead and run this and it's gonna be the exact same thing. This is going to take about 15 to 20 minutes, however long it took you to back it up, expect it to take just as long. And once it's done, it's gonna kick you back to the main menu, but I'm gonna go ahead and skip over that and I'll see you guys in a quick sec. So the replacement games have successfully been transferred to the internal memory, and we're pretty much good to go at this point. All that needs to be done is to disconnect everything, remove your USB drive, and just connect your PlayStation 1 Classic up as it would have been out of the box with just the power cord, HDMI, and a controller, and those games should be there. And we are gonna test that in a quick second, but I do wanna show you guys one last feature here, and this is this restore backup games. So remember how we took the backup of the original games? This is going to be the option that you would use if you wanted to restore it back to stock. And I did previously mention if you were looking to change it up again in terms of what games you put on the internal memory, the best practice right now is to restore the original games back onto the console, re-upload some new games through the desktop app, and then retransfer them back onto the console again. So that's what would be recommended, but like I said, we're pretty much done. 
let's go ahead and turn this thing off, unplug everything, and then show you guys what the new stock PlayStation Classic looks like. And there you guys have it. So now this is what our new PlayStation Classic internal memory is going to look like. I don't have any USBs connected. I don't have anything other than a power cord, HDMI cord, and a single controller. And as you can see, all the games that I had personally loaded up are on here. And just to verify that they are working, I will go ahead and select a title and let's see if we can get it up and running. All right, guys, and there it is, Crash Bandicoot running stock on the PlayStation Classic, like it should have been included in the first place, and uh, everything is going to function as it originally would have. So if we go ahead and hit the reset button, it is going to take us back into the main menu, and it will automatically create a save state for us. So save states work, everything else is good to go, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know down below in the comment section if you guys have any questions, concerns, or anything along those lines. I want to hear from you guys. And let me know if this is something that you guys would do, having the ability to load 20 games onto the internal memory of the PlayStation Classic and not need to mess around with the USB drive for Project Eris or, or AutoBleam or any of those things. Just you pick your 20 favorite games, they're on your console, and that's all you need to worry about. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you didn't like it, but thank you so very much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys again real soon.